Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. Tonight, America faces the single biggest threat in her more than 200 year history. Worse than what we faced in World War I, World War II, the attack on Pearl Harbor, and Al Qaeda on 9 11. I'm telling you, ISIS, if not already on American soil, will be here. They are coming. And whether they come as a legion or lone wolves, the damage will be painful and it will be extensive. It will happen here on our soil. You're fortunate that you live in a country virtually untouched by war, while in other parts of the world it's their daily fare. Except for military families, the horrors that we watch on the news could just as well be a world away. But now, this is close. The simple truth, we are not prepared and certainly not ready. Lone wolves arrested in Washington State, Rochester, New York, and Colorado. I've been telling you for months that you need to be afraid. Now you know me. Most of the time, I'm fearless. I've spent my life fighting, investigating, prosecuting, and sentencing the worst of the worst. But tonight, I'm worried. You may not know where places like Baghdad, Aleppo, Tehran, or Fallujah are, but if you don't think that what happens there matters to you, you're wrong. And I don't care if you live in Beaumont, Texas, New York City, or Anaconda, Montana. You need to be afraid. And what we need to do. My resolution? Airstrikes. Bomb them. Bomb them. Keep bombing them. Bomb them again and again. And I don't care how long it takes. Just take out ISIS. Take out their convoys and take out those troops. You may have thought it was good TV even entertaining. But you now know it's not a joke. Two Americans beheaded by an English-speaking barbarian, a third a Brit, while a fourth is lined up for the most brutal, savage, end-of-life experience imaginable. These are not amateurs. They are experts at the systematic, pervasive torture, mass killings, rape, public crucifixions, beheadings, some even videotaped and used as a propaganda tool to entice those who believe in evil and want to impose hell on the rest of us under the guise of their God. The ISIS terror group owns oil fields. They have a corporate structure. And they bring in $3 million a day selling oil. They leverage technology to glorify and recruit more jihadists. All while the world watches while we dither and call them a JV team. But like a lion waiting to attack, they watch their prey. They analyze us. They read us. Do we act when Americans are in danger? Do we even react? Almost two years to arrest the Benghazi ringleader. They know our vulnerabilities and strengths. At time, they are one and the same. We are a free and open society with risks inherent in each. They know the border is not only open, they know they'll be welcomed with no papers at all. And this week's arrests in Australia magnify the global reach of ISIS, where random kidnappings and public beheadings were planned, all linked to ISIS. Their intent was to actually behead random members of the public. You, anyone, and they call these demonstration killings designed to shock and horrify. Yes, everything I've been telling you for months is accurate. You need to think September 11, 2001. You need to remember what it felt like then. Don't sit there and think the government has you covered. Hell, the White House itself and its perimeter were penetrated twice in the last 24 hours. And think Boston, as in Boston bombers. Two brothers, one a teen, here on asylum as victims of another country. We do everything for them. 
And when another country calls to tell us not once but twice that they're a terror risk, our FBI investigates and concludes that they're not. And when the older brother goes back and forth to the country from which he sought asylum, he's not stopped upon his return to the U.S. by ICE or Homeland Security. These two brothers had the whole city of Boston on lockdown with a couple of pressure cookers. FBI, state police, local police, ATF, all looking for one team. Do you think anyone would be able to respond to your needs in such a situation? Not a chance. No one is taking this seriously enough. If our government were listening, our borders would be closed. If our government were listening, we'd be bombing ISIS nonstop. And if they were listening, our president would be following the advice of the military experts united on the issue of boots on the ground. But instead, our president thinks he knows more than the military experts. A disagreement highlighted this week and virtually unseen in American history. And if our government were listening, we would never have gotten out of Iraq the way that we did with the consequences that George Bush predicted and even Leon Panetta said was a mistake. And if the government were listening, they would raise the terror threat level. When people are willing to commit war crimes on camera, they are not afraid of us. And if only you were listening this time, I'm telling you to batten down the hatches. Make plans to reach family members in the event of an emergency. Teach your children to be alert. Get supplies that might not be as easily available. Check what your kids, even teens, are looking at online. It's time for us to come together and take the threat seriously. And that's my open. With me now, former CIA.